you can hear me now, but I don't know if you can see my shirt. Before you think I came on here all tirado, I wore this shirt in particular because it's not just books that are banned, it's teachers that are, who are being silenced. Um, I have to say, Tony, I have been invited to Tucson High School. Curtis Acosta has asked me to come to his classroom. So I have seen the really good things that go on in those classrooms, what he does, the real learning that goes on. But I wore this shirt, it says, University of California, Santa Cruz, Early Academic Outreach Program, Summer Academic Institute, 1989. I've had this shirt since I was 17 years old. <laughs> the thing is, I wore it tonight because this was an opportunity. I had a door that was open for me. I had teachers who stood in front of me and gave me books and gave me the opportunity to think. You could get into UC Santa Cruz, you could get into Harvard, you can get anywhere you want if you read books. Go after teachers, go after teachers. So I wanted to read from my teacher, Elena Maria Viramontes, who is with us in spirit from LA, who couldn't be here tonight. When Estrella first came upon Perfecto's red toolbox box, like a suitcase near the door, she became very angry. So what is this about? She had opened the tool chest and all that jumbled steel inside the box, the iron bars and things with handles, the funny shaped objects seemed as confusing and foreign as the alphabet she could not decipher. The tool chest stood guard by the door and she and the lid closed on the secret. For days, she was silent with rage. The mother believed her a victim of the evil eye. Estrella hated when things were kept from her. The teachers in the school did the same, never giving her the information she wanted. Estrella would ask over and over again, so what is this? And point to the diagonal lines written in chalk on the blackboard with a dirty fingernail. The script A's had the curly cue of a pry bar, a hammerhead split like a V. The small eyes resembled nails. So tell me. But some of the teachers were more concerned about the dirt under her fingernails. They inspected her head for mice, parting her long hair with ice cream sticks. They scrubbed her fingers with a toothbrush until they were so sore she couldn't hold a pencil properly. They said good luck to her when the pista was over reserving the desks in the back of the classroom for the next back, batch of migrant children. Estrella often wondered what happened to all the things they boxed away in tool chests and kept to themselves. She remembered how one teacher, Mrs. Horn, who had a face of a crumpled Kleenex and a nose like a hook, she did not imagine this, asked her how come her mama never gave her a bath. Until then, it had never occurred to Estrella that she was dirty that the wet towel wiped on her resistant face each morning, the vigorous brushing and tight braids her mother neatly weaved were not enough for Mrs. Horn. And for the first time, Estrella realized words could become as excruciating as rusted nails piercing the heels of her bare feet. The curves and the tails of the tools made no sense, and the shapes were as foreign and meaningless to her as chalky lines on the blackboard. But Perfecto Flores was a man who came with his tool chest and stayed, a man who had no record of his birth except for the year 1917, which appeared to him in a dream. He had a history that was unspoken, memories that only surfaced in nightmares. No one remembered knowing him before his arrival, but everyone used his name to describe a job well done. He opened the toolbox as if bartering for her voice, lifting a chisel and hammer, aquí, pégale aquí, to take the hinge pins out of the hinge joints when you want to remove a door. Start with the lowest hinge, tap the pin here from the top, tap upwards. When there's too many layers of paint on the hinges, tap straight in with the screwdriver at the base, right here, where the pins widen. And if that doesn't work because your manitas aren't strong enough, fasten the vice pliers there. These, then twist the pliers with your hammer. Perfecto Flores taught her the names that went with the tools. A claw hammer, he said, with authority, mining its function. 
Screwdriver C, holding on various heads and pointing to them. Crescent wrenches, looped pliers like scissors for cutting chicken or barbed wire, old wood saw, new hacksaw, a sledgehammer, pry bar, chisel, axe, names that gave meaning to the tools. Tools to build, bury, tear down, rearrange and prepare, a box of reasons his hands took pride in. She lifted the pry bar in her hand, felt the coolness of iron and power of function, weighed the significance it awarded her, and soon she came to understand how essential it was to know these things. That was when she began to read. Yeah.